The Feeling Good Handbook by David Burns David Burns is a psychiatrist and author who has written extensively on cognitive therapy, a type of psychotherapy that focuses on changing the way people think. His book, The Feeling Good Handbook, is a self-help book that has been translated into over 30 languages and has sold over 3 million copies. The book is divided into three parts. Part 1 introduces the concept of cognitive distortions, which are inaccurate or unhelpful ways of thinking that can lead to negative emotions and behaviors. Part 2 provides readers with tools and techniques for challenging their negative thoughts and replacing them with more realistic and helpful thoughts. Part 3 provides tips for putting the concepts and techniques from the book into practice. The Feeling Good Handbook is a comprehensive and practical guide to cognitive therapy. It is a valuable resource for anyone who is struggling with negative thoughts and emotions. Here are some of the key takeaways from the book. Our thoughts can have a significant impact on our emotions and behaviors. By changing our thoughts, we can improve our mood and overall mental health. Cognitive distortions are inaccurate or unhelpful ways of thinking that can lead to negative emotions and behaviors. There are tools and techniques that can be used to challenge cognitive distortions and replace them with more realistic and helpful thoughts. Putting the concepts and techniques from the book into practice can lead to significant improvement in mood and overall mental health. Part 1 – Understanding Negative Thinking In this section, Burns introduces the concept of cognitive distortions, which are inaccurate or unhelpful ways of thinking that can lead to negative emotions and behaviors. He discusses 10 common cognitive distortions, including, all-or-nothing thinking, this is the tendency to see things in black and white, with no shades of gray. Catastrophizing, this is the tendency to see the worst possible outcome in any situation. Mind reading, this is the tendency to believe that you know what other people are thinking, even when they don't tell you. Fortune telling, this is the tendency to predict the future negatively. Magnification, this is the tendency to focus on the negative aspects of a situation and to blow them out of proportion. Minimization, this is the tendency to downplay the positive aspects of a situation and to make them seem insignificant. Personalization, this is the tendency to take responsibility for things that are not your fault. Should statements, this is the tendency to make demands on yourself and others that are unrealistic and inflexible. Labeling, this is the tendency to define yourself or others in negative terms. Burns argues that cognitive distortions are at the root of many emotional problems, such as depression, anxiety, and anger. He provides readers with tools and techniques for challenging their negative thoughts and replacing them with more realistic and helpful thoughts. Here are some tips for challenging your negative thoughts. Be aware of your negative thoughts. The first step to challenging your negative thoughts is to become aware of them. Pay attention to the thoughts that you have when you're feeling down or anxious. Question your negative thoughts. Once you're aware of your negative thoughts, ask yourself if they're really true. Is there any evidence to support your negative thought? Is there any evidence to contradict your negative thought? Replace your negative thoughts with more realistic thoughts. Once you've questioned your negative thoughts, replace them with more realistic thoughts. This may take some practice, but it's important to keep trying. In Part 2, Burns provides readers with a variety of tools and techniques for challenging their negative thoughts and replacing them with more realistic and helpful thoughts. These tools include, Thought Records, this is a tool for tracking your negative thoughts and identifying the cognitive distortions that are underlying them. To use a thought record, simply write down the following information about each negative thought, the situation, what happened that led to the negative thought. The negative thought, what did you think about the situation? The emotional consequence, how did the negative thought make you feel? The cognitive distortion, what cognitive distortion is underlying the negative thought? The alternative thought, what more realistic and helpful thought could you have had instead? The emotional consequence of the alternative thought, how did the alternative thought make you feel? Challenging your thoughts, this is a process of examining your negative thoughts for evidence to support them. 
To challenge your thoughts, ask yourself the following questions. Is there any evidence to support my negative thought? Is there any evidence to contradict my negative thought? What is the most likely explanation for what happened? Am I being too hard on myself? Am I making too many assumptions? Am I catastrophizing? Generating alternative thoughts, this is a process of coming up with more realistic and helpful thoughts to replace your negative thoughts. To generate alternative thoughts, try to think of the situation from a different perspective. What would someone else think about the situation? What would a wise and compassionate person think about the situation? Practicing positive thinking, this is the process of practicing thinking in a more positive way. To practice positive thinking, try to focus on the positive aspects of your life. What are you grateful for? What are you good at? What are your strengths and accomplishments? By using these tools and techniques, you can learn to challenge your negative thoughts and replace them with more realistic and helpful thoughts. This can lead to a significant improvement in your mood and overall mental health. Here are some additional tips for challenging your negative thoughts, be patient. It takes time and effort to learn to challenge your negative thoughts. Be persistent. Don't give up if you don't see results immediately. Be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up if you slip up and have a negative thought. Just acknowledge the thought and challenge it. With time and effort, you can learn to challenge your negative thoughts and improve your mood and overall mental health. Part 3, Putting it all together in this section, Burns provides readers with tips for putting all of the concepts and techniques from the book into practice. He also discusses the importance of maintaining your progress and avoiding relapse. Here are some tips for putting the concepts and techniques from the book into practice, read the book slowly and carefully. Don't try to rush through it. Take your time and absorb the material. Work through the exercises and worksheets. The exercises and worksheets are designed to help you learn the concepts and techniques from the book. Don't be afraid to ask for help from a therapist or counselor. If you're struggling to put the concepts and techniques into practice, a therapist or counselor can help you. Here are some tips for maintaining your progress and avoiding relapse. Continue to practice the concepts and techniques from the book. The more you practice, the better you'll get at challenging your negative thoughts and replacing them with more realistic and helpful thoughts. Be patient. It takes time and effort to change the way you think. Don't get discouraged if you don't see results immediately. Be kind to yourself. If you slip up and have a negative thought, don't beat yourself up. Just acknowledge the thought and challenge it. With time and effort, you can learn to change the way you think and improve your mood and overall mental health. In conclusion, the Feeling Good Handbook is a comprehensive and practical guide to cognitive therapy. It is a valuable resource for anyone who is struggling with negative thoughts and emotions. The book provides a clear and concise overview of cognitive therapy, and it provides readers with the tools they need to change the way they think. If you are struggling with negative thoughts and emotions, I encourage you to read The Feeling Good Handbook. It is a valuable resource that can help you improve your mood and overall mental health.